We're live. Sure. Hello, Robert. How are you today? I'm great, Susan. How are you? I'm really good. I'm good. I'm here in Florida. It's still really hot, but I'm trying to get in the fall spirit here. How are things in New York? Uh, everything is great. Typical October weather. It's starting to cool off. Uh, still sun. Hopefully the rain uh, isn't as much as we've been getting over the summer, uh, but we're looking for the fall season as well here. Nice, nice. Well, I think we're here to talk about how to supercharge uh, your experience at IT Nation Connect. And yes. you and I both have a lot of experience. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your experience with attending Connect? Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I've been a uh, ConnectWise partner for uh, at least my company, Progressive Computing, has been a partner for about uh, 13, 14 years. Uh, we got heavily involved with ConnectWise with our HTG and now uh, uh, IT Nation Evolve membership. And I've been a facilitator for the last three years. Uh, so I've been to a lot of the events, a lot of the trade shows. I'm sure just like everybody listening to us right now has uh, not only attended a lot of the ConnectWise shows, but uh, all of the industry shows uh, over, for some of us, over many decades. Absolutely. People have a lot of choices these days, right? Um, but Connect, Connect is a big one. It's a big one to swallow. And if, if you haven't been before, um, it can be a lot. So I've been uh, with ConnectWise now for uh, about almost eight years. This will be my ninth Connect coming up in November. So I worked on the events team. I've worked in marketing and now I'm on the strategy side of the house. So I'm really happy to be in a role now where I get to talk to partners like you and, and help you uh, get the most out of your experience. So let's dig in. What are some of the things that you do to prepare for Connect or any show? So let me, you know, let me preface that uh, question a little bit by what's sort of going through my head. And I think why, you know, we ended up talking together on this live stream is because I've always felt, you know, I've attended events uh, year after year and, you know, always wondered there's got to be a better way to get more value out of my attendance, both in uh, pre-planning, having a plan of action going there, executing on that plan while I'm there, and also what I'm going to be doing with that information or content or action items after I return back to the office. Every MSP knows when you uh, go to an event, you're you know drinking that proverbial Kool-Aid, which isn't a bad thing, but when you get back to the office, you're in a different reality. Uh, you've got home uh, uh, issues going on, you know, just life in general, and you've got MSP life uh, running the business, and it's it's hard to extract the value out of these um, conferences unless you have a specific and intentional plan ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to really, you have to do your best to unplug, right? You've got to unplug from the business if you can, the best that you can, and just really give all of yourself and your focus to what you're there to achieve. So knowing your goals and attending is a big part of it, right? Making sure yeah. you have a plan. Um, you know, also, looking at the conference information before you go, right? Go on the website. Um, most events have mobile apps now. I think I think our mobile app is usually available about a few weeks beforehand. And you can check out all the breakout sessions and really start to kind of map out what your experience is going to be. Because um, it's also a big, a big location too. So. so those are great points. I mean, I think preparing for an event requires you to make sure that while you're at the event, you have few distractions. And so that means as few of, uh, of, uh, um, uh, as few of interruptions as you can possibly manage, right? Making sure that you're not, and I know there's a lot of people out there that are guilty of this, uh, handling tickets while you're out there, doing service calls. You shouldn't be doing that while you've in, you're investing this time working on your business. Otherwise you're missing out, right? Now it's inevitable that those things are gonna happen, but you've really gotta to try to minimize that stuff. And I think that's really important. But you also brought up looking at the agenda ahead of time, which I think is profoundly important. Many of us just show up and say, all right, I guess I'm going to the keynote and then I'll figure out what to do after that. And we kind of maybe wander a little aimlessly. So I'm hoping to inspire people today to really think about putting some time and effort into preparing beforehand to make sure that you've got a, a plan of action while you're there. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways this year that you can plan. We've got session tracks so you can look at the different tracks uh, and see maybe what apply to your goals and attending from business operations, cybersecurity, uh, operations and sales, employee development, um, customer acquisition and retention. And we have, you know, ConnectWise product education this year. So, you know, maybe you're not an owner 
Um, maybe you're in a leadership role. Maybe you're there because you're one of the technical thinkers in your company and, you know, you need to go there with that hat on and really think about what are you bringing back to the business that's going to help, you know, automate things more, save the company money and, and really, you know, set you guys up for success in the future. Yeah. So certainly, I mean, on that point, I think it's important. Uh, not only to think about bringing other people along for the ride, right? And why that's important. I know it's an additional cost, but uh, being able to extract the value out of these shows, especially at Connect with so much content. And like you said, the different tracks, maybe I should bring a technical person along and allow them to do the technical tracks while I focus on maybe some more of the business sides of things, but also making sure that you've got a plan for that, right? Hey, let's put our heads together and figure out what, where you're going to go, what, where is, what, where, where I'm going to go. It would be silly for us to both end up in the same places at the same time. Yeah. And that, that's actually a good segue. Cause I was going to ask you like, how do you tackle this when you're there? If you're going by yourself, there's one way to do it. If you're going with the team, divide and conquer, come up with a plan, figure out what everybody's going to attend, you know, schedule some time when you're together on site to kind of debrief, you know, make sure you have a notebook, you're writing things down, you know, you take in so much information. Um, and it's just, it's highly likely that you're going to get, you know, too much in your, in your head and, and you're not going to be able to track it all down if you're just one person. So. Yeah. I, I really like the use of the apps. Those are relatively new in the last couple of years for a lot of different conferences. I know, uh, 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 ConnectWise has been making use of um, app usage at many of their conferences. At first, I was unsure if I should use it, um, but I've really been relying on those uh, very consistently. Um, and I'm a bit old school. I know you mentioned notebook. I think I kind of put that thought. I am that. too. <laughs> uh, I like pen and paper. I still think it's technology. It's technology to a caveman, at least. Um, so I, I like scribbling notes down because if I have my phone or a laptop, there's too much temptation to be distracted by something else. And I can't make a note as fast as I can with good old pen and paper. So I just, you know, I really encourage people to do whatever they're most comfortable with, but at yeah. least, you know, carry something with you that you can jot some notes down. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about modes theory. Um, you're in Evolve, you're a facilitator. You know, um, the modes theory is, you know, the the assessments are something that we're all familiar with in Evolve. And if you aren't familiar with um, modes and you're watching this, um, think of modes as like a language or a way to identify where you are in your relationship with growth. So there are four modes. There's startup mode, there's balance builder, value builder and empire builder. Tell us a little about your mode. Uh, well, my mode is value builder in my company. We've been in business uh, coming up on 31 years. Uh, so um, we are uh, essentially what that means is that we're still looking for consistent growth and building the organization. Um, it doesn't mean that our mode is better than other modes. Uh, some, some people I know are in that empire builder, right? They're finding funding, they've got angel investors or maybe even private equity, and they're pouring crazy amounts of money into growth efforts. Uh, I applaud them for doing that. It's not for everybody. Right. As well as the balance builder is really not for everybody either, because that's maybe someone who might be at my stage of the game 30 plus years in and just looking to sort of coast along and, and uh, um, uh, support my lifestyle uh, which could go on indefinitely, right? And and uh, running a successful business at the same time, right? True. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. I think um, the the misnomer about balance builder is some people uh, would think, oh, you're just lazy or you're just milking this. No, 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 no. I've I've worked really hard to build this practice to where it is, and now I'm enjoying the fruits of those labor uh, of that labor. And I don't need fifty percent growth per year because I've built a sizable business. It's mature. It's very stable. We're very well respected in our uh, community and uh, why not just you know let it let it continue? Yeah. Uh, so it's really important to not only know yourself and where mm -hmm. you are and what you need, but that helps inform other people that you're speaking with uh, whether or not uh, you're in the right conversation or what sort of value that they can provide you. Right? If I'm a balance builder and I'm in a room full of empire builders, uh, or there's a vendor who can really help me with my empire building um uh, goals i'm probably in the wrong conversation right yeah so robert that was a really great 
explanation. Um, and I'm so glad we're talking about this because we're doing a lot this year at Connect to really help attendees um, understand their mode, understand where they are in their relationship with growth and allow that to be a conversational tool and a guide in their experience at Connect. So we do have a couple pre-days on Wednesday, one at 10 a.m., one at 2 p.m., where you can go. And if you're new to modes or you just want to get a better, deeper understanding, um, you can attend that. And that'll really help you in planning your experience on site. Um, you're going to see a lot of people wearing flair that says empire builder or balance builder or value builder. So we really encourage everyone to allow that to be a conversational tool um, and really help guide their experience. So something new also this year that I'm super excited about is we are trying out a new service on site on Wednesday, the pre-day. Um, it's kind of like a concierge service, but we've branded it and named it the IT Nation GPS because we're going to help you point, point you in the right direction. So you can book an appointment, 30 minute window. There's going to be a team of people, myself included. Maybe I can snag Robert if he's not facilitating Evolve on Wednesday to come hang out with us. And you can book a window, stop by, and you can have a conversation with um, seasoned conference goers, people who know the agenda um, and help you really map out your experience at Connect. So if you're someone who's like, hey, I like to do it by myself. I want to write it all down. I know what I'm doing. I've done this before. It may not be for you, but if you're a first timer coming or you're like, you know what? I'm not really sure. I can't decide between these two sessions and they're on opposite sides of the building. And I know if I pick this one and it's not the right one, then I have to walk 15 minutes the other way and I've missed out on a breakout session round. And we all know that that happens and we get frustrated, right? So we want to help you um, plan the most of your experience. So be on the lookout for that and your pre-event communications, IT Nation, GPS team, and you can book an appointment. So I love that idea, by the way. I think it's brilliant that you guys have done that. I think it's really important, even for those that may feel that, well, I kind of know what I'm doing. You really should check it out because I think it could really save uh, sometimes even an afternoon of, oh, I wandered aimlessly. I didn't really get good value. Something like, like that can really turn, turn the event around for you. Absolutely. And something else we haven't talked about, Robert, and I'm curious how you do this, is when you're at the event and you're unplugged from work and you're really focused, they are really long days, right? So you have to make sure you plan some time to recharge that battery, right? How do you find time at the event to kind of just take a minute, collect your thoughts? Is it quiet time for you? What is it? How do you kind of find a moment in the day? Or are you someone that just you are from eight in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, fully yeah. engrossed in the event. I'm that guy. I'm the guy who's probably internally exhausted, but just going nonstop, um, probably um, later than I hope my wife's not listening in, but probably uh, much later into the nights that I would uh, care to admit openly. Um, but you know what? That's good because it really helps me unwind at the end of the day to spend time with, uh, uh, with friends that I don't get to see uh, as often as I'd like. Uh, to share a lot of laughs and, you know, really just have a good time. But uh, despite what I just said, making sure that you get good sleep, making sure that you're wearing comfortable clothing, especially oh, yes. shoes, right? Yes. Uh, guys don't, I know women think about shoes a lot. Guys maybe don't think about shoes as much as they should. You can invest in a good pair of quality, uh, you know, uh, uh, shoes that uh, look good, right? Business casual shoes, but that are comfortable. Uh, please don't bring a pair of shoes that you're just breaking in because you're going to have a miserable time. I did that once a long time ago and it was horrible. But um, yeah, I try to I try to mix my day up as well. Instead of just going from session to session to session to session, your brain can become very fatigued. So it's important to block out a little bit of time and maybe, hey, Susan, what, you know, do you have an hour at three o'clock that you and I can just like go grab a cup of coffee and talk about something? You know, you should try to do those sort of hallway conversations as well. Break it up is essentially the bottom line there. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, one of our listeners said, you know, resist the temptation to spend all of the time with the, with the people you came with or the people oh, yeah. you know. And get get out and meet new people. And there's a lot of ways to do that. There's breakfasts, there's networking uh, opportunities. There's a lot of ways you can go if you're like, huh, these this is a topic I'm really interested in. Go meet somebody. You know, you, you just never know who you're going to meet. I know people have sat down at breakfast next to somebody they don't know, and it's changed the course of their business. They've made a lifelong friend. So we really encourage that. Have you had an experience like that, Robert, where yeah, you met I someone and it just 
pe people tell me, oh, Robert, you're such a confident person. Like you get up and do these presentations and you'll do things like this and you sound so confident and comfortable in yourself. Believe me, I'm, I've always got butterflies, especially in a crowded room that I don't really know anybody. Uh, you know, I've got, it's just like those movies where you feel like, you know, uh, everybody's kind of laughing at you. It's not that, trust me, most people feel exactly the way you do. And what I've done over the years is I've forced myself to sit, especially like at lunch or breakfast at tables where I don't know anyone or a way to break the ice is, oh, I see Susan sitting at a table with five or six other people that I don't know, but I know Susan, Susan, can I join you guys? Great. And then you just start introducing. A perfect me. segue, right? It's comfortable. Oh, it's a gateway in, and then you feel comfortable talking. You no, know, and just extend your hand, smile, introduce yourself. You don't have to go into your lifelong history and all your dirty laundry, but just, you know, break the ice and you'd be surprised how many people will respond to that very yeah. positively, I might add. Absolutely. So let's talk about what you do when you leave, because I think that's also super important, right? Um, there's this concept of falling off the inspirational cliff. Many people go to the go to conferences and they take in so much information and then they go back and they stress their teams out or they don't plan and they try to do everything and they just kind of crash and burn. So what are the things that you do that have helped you be successful after an event, kind of implementing the things that you've learned? So a great question. Interestingly enough, it's more about what you do before you go, right? Because if I have a plan, if I've written out what uh, what my intention is for going to this conference that hopefully you've backtracked to maybe your business plan, right? What you've done on an, on a, on an annual basis. For those of us following EOS, for instance, and you're on a calendar year, fiscal year, you probably have a plan that you wrote uh, in Q4 of 2022 coming up into planning for 2020. Four, what a wonderful time for IT Nation Connect, right? Because you've got now actually two business plans that you're looking at. And so if I know intentionally, hey, here are the things I need to wrap up for 23, as well as things that I'm looking forward to in 24, even if you haven't done that planning yet, I probably have a good idea, good sense of some of the things that we're looking uh, uh, to plug or fill or explore, right? But when you get back, it's then time to uh, measure up all your notes in that notebook or whatever you've taken in OneNote or whatever application you use to capture that stuff, not only to bring it back and compare against your plan, but also to share that with other team members. One habit that I've developed, uh, well, sort of semi-developed, I'm not great at this, I'm okay at this, but I want to get better, is doing a little bit of a write-up for my team, everybody in the company. This is where I was, this is what I learned, these are some of the takeaways. Here are some issues that I think that we should be working on. Sort of a recap, instead of me just walking in the office and say, hey, Robert, like, how you been? Like, you know, how was the conference? Right. right. You know, it's just like when my daughter comes home from middle school and now high school, like, hey, honey, how was school today? Good. Like, no, like, that's not an acceptable answer. You can't come back to your companies and say, it was great. I had a lot of fun and I got some OK sleep and my feet don't hurt. OK, but like, what did you get out of it and what are you bringing back to the company? So documenting yeah. that stuff, measuring it up against the plan and sharing it with the team in an actionable way. Hey, EOS followers, right? Issues list, right? That's a great way to kind of uh, seed or bring back those ideas. It's like recreating the journey, right, for your team. And exactly. then you can also, to your point, identify champions, right? Pick people within your organization that are going to help drive success into some of the initiatives because you can't do it all when you get back. You Absolutely. can't drive every initiative, right? And just one note on that. You, you're 100% right. You can't uh, be the only person that's driving this stuff. You need to give other people ownership. But in a similar vein, you can't dump on people, right? right. You can't bring something back to the team and go, I found this thing, blah, blah, blah. They were great, la, la, la. And here it is and you should, you know, we're gonna implement this. You've gotta get their buy-in. You've gotta allow them to go through the same uh, sort of walk and talk with that vendor about why this is important for your business and then allow them to make or be part of the uh, decision-making process. Right. Uh, I did this many, many years ago. I found a firewall uh, vendor uh, that I was enamored with at the show and came back and tried to force it on my team and it it we i still get beat up about it it's 15 years later they still 
uh, give me give you a hard time. That one, yeah, yeah, and rightly so. I deserve every single punch on that one. So, well, I think you hit it all right. Do your vendor due diligence. Uh, do your research. Get back to the basics. You know, manage your limited time. What are you going to do? What are you going to defer? What are you going to delete? What are you going to delegate? Yeah. And also, you know, how are you going to differentiate? So how are you going to stand out in the market? And what's going to be the most meaningful for you to, to implement within your existing strategy and your plan? So those are all great ways to not fall off that cliff. I think of um, that cartoon with the roadrunner, right, where he just keeps falling off the cliff or the, the coyote, he's trying to get the road runner yep, and he just yep. crashes and burns. It's like over and over again. That's the mental That's image that I, I have. Are. Suddenly I'm like hitting the chords and playing. And then I think about what I'm doing and then it all falls apart. So, um, and then I can't, I can't hit a chord at all. Uh, hey, one other quick little thing I thought of uh, is the importance of looking at the vendors and sponsors uh, beforehand. That's a, a tried and true practice of mine. I look at who's sponsoring Right. Um, you know, not only do I want to be respectful of these companies that they've put time and money into investing in my experience there, but I want to look at the ones that I might say, hey, I've been meaning to chat with them uh, and, you know, going to intentionally spend some quality time because you walk in that room and it's overwhelming. Right. It's big. I think there's over there's hun over 100, if not more yeah, in that yeah, room. As, a, as a, I know everybody thinks I'm an extrovert, but I'm really an introvert. And I kind of look at that and I get a little seized up by it's just so overwhelming. Yeah. Um, the other little point there, too, is to avoid hanging out with the vendors that, you know, right, because then you're taking away not only their time from talking to new people, but you're also losing out on the opportunity to meet somebody new that may really uh, provide a lot of value or an yeah. to your business. That's a good point. There's a lot of vendors that come to connect to that are new to our space and our industry and our community, and they are really there to meet the attendees and immerse themselves. So make sure you take the time to go around and talk to the ones that are that you wouldn't, you know, obviously they need to be within the scope of what you're planning to get value out of, but, you know, say hi to your vendors. You know, if you if you do need to meet with one of your vendors, though, like there's you can book appointments with them. That's something that if that's on your strategy and on your plan, go for it. But that's a great point. Um, I think we're running out of time, but let's talk about your webinar coming up on October 25th. Yeah, the morning of the 25th, I'm basically going to take this entire topic that we've uh, been chatting about here and uh, provide a full presentation on it with a lot more detail about uh all of the points that we've spoken about uh, and maybe even some that we haven't but i'm going to try to go a little deeper and try to make it a little bit more actionable and thoughtful for everybody i mean these conversations are wonderful um, and it's a good primer if you're listening to attend that event because you'll get a lot more concrete information uh, and please spread the word uh, yeah. to, your peers, to your colleagues to your groups um, and uh, you know and if uh, even if you don't know me you know reach out uh after this session or even that session or find me at the event i'd love to just chat uh with really anybody in the channel about these ideas because i think um for me personally i've always been on a mission of giving back to the community that has given me so much yeah and that's a great point to end on is that this community that when everyone gets together at connect in person it's such a go-giver community everyone is there to help every help each other so keep that in mind when you're attending especially if you're a first timer don't be afraid to share yep. um don't be afraid to ask questions i think you'll be surprised how willing people are to share with you totally. so awesome thank you so much robert this was such a fun conversation um look forward to your webinar i look forward to seeing you in orlando and um yeah i think we're less than 30 days away so we are so be, get, get ready <laughs> yeah i got my shoes i'm ready i got my comfortable right. shoes all right. All right. Thank you so much, Susan. I appreciate you. See you soon. You too. All right. Ciao. Bye.